For which positive integers n does 2 to the n minus 1 have no prime factor larger than 7? This problem appeared in the 2023 Korean Mathematical Olympiad, that's South Korea, just in case you were wondering. When n equals 1, 2 to the n minus 1 is 1, which of course has no prime factor larger than 7. When n equals 2 and 3, again, no prime factors larger than 7. When n equals 4, we'll get 15, which is 3 times 5, again, that works. But when n is 5, we'll get 31, which is prime, and larger than 7, so no good. n equals 6 gives 63, which is 9 by 7, or 3 squared by 7. Again, no prime factor larger than 7, so this is in our solution set. 2 to the 7 minus 1 is 127, which is prime, which we can test by uh, recognizing that we've got to try all primes up to about 11, and 3 doesn't work, 5, 7, 11 don't work, that is prime. 2 to the 8 minus 1 is 255, five, which is, of course, divisible by 5. It's also divisible by 3. It's actually 3 by 5 by 17. Now, 17 is a prime larger than 7, so it's not in our solution set. All right, last one. 2 to the 9 minus 1 is 511. I wonder if you can see which primes would go into 511. It's actually divisible by 7, and it's 7 by 73, which is prime larger than 7, so no again. Having tried all the single digit values of n, we have n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and 6, for which 2 to the n minus 1 has no prime factors larger than 7. But are these the only solutions? If no, of course we want to find the other solutions. If yes, we need to prove that these are the only solutions. So what could we do? We can start by using some modular arithmetic, which is essentially to consider the remainder after division by some integer. So for example, 2 to the n mod 7 would be the remainder after 2 to the n is divided by 7. 2 to the 1 would be 2 mod 7. 2 to the 2 would be 4 mod 7. 2 to the 3, 8, would be 1 mod 7. 2 to the 4 is going to be 2 mod 7. Now I could think, okay, 2 to the 4 is 16, which is uh, 2 more than 14, so 2 mod 7. But what's easier is to think of 2 to the 4 as 2 to the 3 times 2. And I know that 2 to the 3 was 1 mod 7, so timesing that by 2, I get to 2 mod 7. And this cycle of remainders 2, 4, 1 is going to keep on repeating. 2, 4, 1, 2, 4, 1. And that's really useful for our problem because we can look at similar cycles, mod 3 and mod 5, and this will help us to predict for which values of n, 2 to the n minus 1, will and will not be divisible by 3, 5, and 7. Because if 2 to the n minus 1 has no prime factor larger than 7, it must be divisible by 3 and or 5 and or 7. It can't be divisible by 2 because it's always going to be odd. So if we complete a table like this, and 2 to the n mod 3 just goes 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, etc. 2 to the n mod 5 goes in cycles of 4, 2, 4, 3, 1, 2, 4, 3, 1. And we're interested in the position of the 1s in the table. For example, if 2 to the n mod 3 is 1, then 2 to the n minus 1 would be divisible by 3. That will happen whenever n is even. We can notice that there's some rows with no 1s meaning that 2 to the n minus 1 would not be divisible by 3, 5, or 7. And that's going to occur in any of these rows that are odd and not a multiple of 3. So n equals 1, 5, 7. If we were to keep going, 11, 13, 17, 19, etc. Those numbers must have a prime factor larger than 7. If n were even, say if n were 2k, then we could use a difference of squares factorization. So we could factorize this into bracket 2 to the k minus 1, bracket 2 to the k plus 1. Now that first bracket 2 to the k minus 1 looks a lot like what we started with. So if k were an odd number, not a multiple of 3, like 5, 7, 11, 13, etc., then 2 to the n minus 1 would have a prime factor larger than 7. And we can generalize this even further to show that if n has any factors that are odd and not a multiple of 3, then 2 to the n minus 1 would have a prime factor larger than 7. We just showed that if n is 2k, we could use a difference of squares factorization. But if n were 3k, for example, we could use a difference of cubes factorization. If n were 4k, well, we could factorize that into 2 to the k minus 1, and the other bracket will be 2 to the 3k plus 2 to the 2k plus 2 to the k plus 1. 
if you've never seen this before, it's not too hard to verify that it works and that it's going to keep on working for any power. Because when you expand out these brackets, um, all the terms will cancel except for the leading term and the minus 1 on the end. So if k is a factor of n, 2 to the k minus 1 will be a factor of 2 to the n minus 1. And as we've seen, if that k is an odd number that's not a multiple of 3, then we're going to have a prime factor larger than 7. Well, that really narrows down the choices for n now, because if we think about the prime factorization for n, it cannot contain any primes larger than 3 because they're all odd. So n must be made up of only 2s and 3s. We can narrow this down even further by looking at the list we created at the start. 2 to the 9 minus 1 was divisible by 73. 9 is 3 squared. 2 to the 8 minus 1 was divisible by 17, and 8 is 2 cubed. So any larger powers of 2 or 3 would also contain 17 or 73 as factors. So now n not only has to be 2 to the a times 3 to the b, but a has to be no bigger than 2 and b no bigger than 1. We've actually listed all the possible options above except for when a is 2, b is 1, when n is 12. Factorizing using difference of squares, we'll get 2 to the 6 minus 1 times 2 to the 6 plus 1, and we'll find that second bracket has 13 as a prime factor, so it is out. That is enough to prove that 1, 2, 3, 4, 6 are in fact the only solutions and the solutions to our problem. Nice, right?